Hey guys, welcome back to another Sunday adventure with Calvary Kids and Harvest Adventure Kids. We're so glad that you came back and you tuned us in. We really appreciate that. And this week, I'll tell you what, Carl, it has got to be my favorite weekend. Yeah, this um, session was quite remarkable. Wow. I, I mean, I he's actually, lost for words. It was that good. I actually had a chance to practice some humility. Humility. Um, I had to give up something I thought I deserved. And what was that, Carl? A little bit of dignity. I think it was a lot of dignity. As a matter of fact, you'll find out more about that later. So God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the show. See ya. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Humble Humor. It's hard to believe that it's actually week three right here in our studio in my grandmother's basement. You know, it's been really fun and exciting, but it's really strange because we haven't been paid for three weeks. I mean, you know, it's okay. Ramen noodles, it's not that bad. What do you think about that, Carl? Carl? Speaking of thin noodles, let me introduce you to the Dream Shredder. It's the latest, greatest shredding machine. Carl? What's happening here? Oh, Brian, this is an advertisement for our show. It's the Dream Shredder. Carl, what kind of nightmare are you trying to sell? No, no, it's, it's not a nightmare. It's not, it's actually fairy tale technology because it's all in a slogan. Put whatever you want in, get your wildest dreams out. Oh, so you're saying you just put your old tax returns in here? No, no, Brian, let me help you out, okay? Listen. We haven't been getting a paycheck in like forever. And so like this is our only chance of getting paid. Wait a second, are you saying we have sponsors for this? That's right, steak and shrimp, baby. Oh, get it out of the way. Hey, are you ready for your next party? All you have to do is take any kind of paper and shred it. Confetti! Did you need to take a nap? Just shred some paper, grab a pillowcase, and stuff it! Do you need some toilet paper? Forget about two-ply. Try shredded ply. Just take some paper towels, and everybody has some. For you, and for you, and for you, and for you, and for you. This one's for me. That's right, Brian. Order while supplies last at 1-800-SHREDDED. Getting paid, huh? Bye-bye, <laughs> ramen. <laughs> yeah, again, sorry for the late notice. I got the call just before the show started. So anyway, back to humble humor. So, Brian, what does humility mean again? Putting others first by giving up what we think we deserve. You've been practicing. Well done. What about jokes? You got any jokes for us? When don't I? What does the interrupting cow say? Uh, I don't Moo. Know. Well, what? Moo. Brian, what? Moo! Oh, okay. <laughs> well, if you like that one, I hope you like these two. Check these out. What happens when you cross the... Vampire and the snowman. Last fight. What happens when you put Dwayne Johnson in a band? It rocks. What happens when you put your phone into the fridge? It makes cool music. John. What do you get when you cross a fish and an elephant? A swimming truck. A swimming um, truck. Try and say it, Daddy. What? What do you get when you cross a parrot, a Godzilla, and a parrot? I don't know, but if he asks for a cracker, give it to him. Wow, Godzilla in a parrot? Does that thing fly? I don't know. If it does, you better get out of its way. Get out of the way. But hey, thank you so much for sending those in. Good job, kids. Yeah, those jokes, they were so good. Thank you so much for sending them in. You know, sometimes laughter, it really is the best medicine. And I really needed that laugh, you know, because I, I gotta be honest, Brian, 
Um, I've been trying this humility thing out, and it turns out it's a lot harder than I thought. I mean, in order for, to put others first, I actually have to give up something. And that's the hard part. And then I, I get so focused on what I'm giving up, I, I ask myself, why am I even doing all this in the first place? Wow. That is really interesting. I mean, Carl, after you asked yourself the question, why do you show humility? Do you actually get an answer? Oh, I did. And after much contemplation and searching within, I realized that whenever you put humility into a relationship, you're always gonna get great things out. Like the Dream Shredder. Good things in, great things out. Yours today for only $19.95, while supplies last. Oh, wow. I see what you did there. I hope we get paid for that plug. Well, anyway, I understand now. So what you're saying is when you put humility in, there's something that comes back out. So whenever you put a person that you just met first, you might actually get out a friend. Yes. Or when you put humility in during a, a fierce game of Monopoly, you get a fun family game night out of it. Oh, and I guess the opposite is true. So when you're having that fierce game of Monopoly and things get heated and you don't put other people first, people get upset and feelings get hurt. Humility, the original dream shredder. Wait, wait, what? You know, a good joke and humility, they actually have a lot in common. See, what's great about jokes is no one sees the joke coming. Like when a good joke is told, the audience has no idea. Anything funny can come out of that. But then the punchline comes and people are shocked at how funny it actually is. Same is true with humility. To put others first, you gotta give up something. And it's really hard to see how anything good can come out of that. But when we have the strength to actually do it, we too are shocked at how much good can come out of such a simple sacrifice. And we've seen Jesus do this over and over and over. In the book of Philippians chapter two, it gives us a very interesting verse to describe how Jesus did this. Let's read it together. Philippians two says this, as you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. In his very nature, he was God. Jesus was equal with God, but he did not take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He was made just like human beings. He appeared as a man and he was humble and obeyed God completely. I don't know about you, but one of my greatest desires is to uh, be humble and obey God completely. But before Jesus could be humble and obey God completely, he had to do something first. He had to give up what he deserved. Now, I'm not sure how easy that was for Jesus, but I know for me and probably you, giving up what we think we deserve, yeah, that's the hard part. But just as Philippians chapter two says, as you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. So let's take a look at a few examples of how Jesus did the hard part of putting others first. The first example comes before Jesus ever does anything. Before he begins traveling and teaching and doing all those amazing miracles we read about, Jesus did something that was really hard. Jesus went off by himself and he fasted. Fasting means you choose to give up food so that you can focus on God. But Jesus, he fasted for 40 days. Yeah, that's longer than you've been out of school. He did this because he wanted to give all of his attention to God. And fasting helps you do just that. You see, Jesus gave up eating food for 40 days. And during that whole time, he put God first. But why did Jesus choose to give up something so hard like food? During those 40 days, Jesus learned how to obey God better and he learned how to hear God more clearly. 
And after that 40 days was over, that's when Jesus began teaching and doing all the miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, preaching to thousands and changing their lives forever. And Jesus would often tell his disciples, listen guys, all I'm doing is saying what I hear the Father say. And all I'm doing is what I see the Father doing. You see, after spending 40 days of focusing on God, Jesus had an incredibly strong connection to God. Now, I'm not planning on fasting for 40 days, but I do think the example that Jesus gives of giving up something hard like food is a great example for us of giving up things that we really, 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 really want, like more screen time, maybe that last donut in the box, or maybe the first one in line. Or maybe you just would like a few extra minutes in the morning to catch up on your sleep. But when we are able to give up things that are really important to us for the purpose of putting other people first, then we are able to see and hear what God wants to do more clearly. Now, another great example of when Jesus did the hard part of humility is when he was walking through a town named Jericho. Everybody had heard he was coming and they had lined the streets to see him. And as Jesus walked through, he saw a man, a grown man, standing in the top of a tree. And he looked up in the tree and he called to him and he said, Hey, I'm coming to your house for dinner. And when Jesus did that, he did something so hard, I don't think any of us would be able to do it. When Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus, he immediately gave up being popular and cool. Because this guy, Zacchaeus, he was hated by the town for good reason. He was a liar and a cheat. I mean, if Zacchaeus was in a movie, he'd be the villain. Everybody thought Jesus was crazy for even speaking to Zacchaeus. But Jesus gave up being popular so that he could put Zacchaeus first. Why did he do that? Because that day, Jesus saw something the town did not see. Jesus saw someone who simply needed a friend. And that day, Zacchaeus changed his crooked ways. And to prove it, he gave back all the money he'd ever lied about and cheated. And then he became the most generous man in town, just so he could be more like his new friend, Jesus. You see, what other people think about us, it's a pretty big deal. But when we can make the needs of others around us a bigger deal, then we will be able to see what other people don't see. And we will be able to see how God wants to use us to bring joy to those around us. Now, the last hard thing that Jesus gave up on this earth was, of course, his life. Now, I don't need to explain to you why that was hard, but why did he do it? Well, I think he did it because he had a strong connection with God and he could see something that nobody else could see. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us exactly what he saw. It says, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. You see, he saw something that was worth doing the hard work. He saw something that giving up his life was worth doing. He saw you and me together again with God. Who was that guy? Beats me. Well, he had some pretty good things to say. Yeah, I was taking notes. You know, that Philippians verse basically says Jesus gave up what he deserved. And I think the reason he did that was so that he could get a relationship out of it with you and me. Mm. And in the same way, when I put humility in, I can get great relationships out. And if we all do that, then everyone gets taken care of. Everyone gets what they need. That's right. And we want you listeners this week to put humility in, which will require some thinking because humility looks different for everyone. I have a few good examples as well. School bus drivers all throughout the county have been putting in extra time and effort to deliver food for kids who are in need. School teachers, they have been putting in long 
extra hours in order to reach out to kids at their homes to make sure they are learning at home. And what's more, medical professionals have been putting in long, hard hours to make sure our community is safe. That's right. And without their humility, our community would be in a lot of trouble right now. And the same is true for you. You can get out a lot when you put humility in. Wow. So we should have a challenge for them this week. What could that challenge be? We all got things we think we deserve. You gotta give those temptations a swerve. Because they're gonna blind you of the value of others. God help us value our brothers. Humility's a choice you gotta make. Do it today for your family's sake. So before today is over, choose. The choice is yours, choose what you lose. Do you see what I mean? I had to give up something for today's show. And he gave up a lot. Yeah. But I'll be honest, it was, it, was, it was funner than I thought it would be. But listen, don't forget the challenge that you heard in the rap. We want you this day, Sunday, before Monday comes, to pre-plan something that you can give up to give you the ability to put others first this week. Wait, wait, wait. So you, what you're saying is that you want them to pre-decide something they give up throughout the week in order to put someone else first? Yes. What are we talking about giving up here, Carl? Well, we all have our routines. We all have our, our screen time. We all have our Xbox time. We all have our days that we go out and do stuff. But I want you to think ahead and with all the people around you and come up with a moment where you can say, I'm gonna give up that thing or that time so that I can put someone else first. Do it ahead of time so that the people around you right now can remind you how to be humble. Well, that's pretty awesome. And we also have some special resources we wanna make sure that parents get in their hands. So take a listen to this. Yeah, there's a video following this called The Fun Stuff, and in there is a brief description of some very simple activities you guys can do at home. But also, it gives you a link that you can download a, a week's worth of resources. And probably the most important thing in that link is a four-day devotional all about humility. Each day, it walks you through one verse, some very simple activities. It's something that kids can do on their own while they're sitting at home, or Parents, you can do it with your kids, and you guys can engage together um, through these devotionals. Another thing you can always do is you can download something called the Parent Q app. It simply cues you to the conversation that we've just begun today, and it gives you some very simple yet profound things that you can do as a parent to carry the conversation further. Wow, that's awesome. And those are some great resources. We want to make sure moms and dads, caretakers, grandmas, grandpas, that you get that in your toolbox for the rest of this week because we're going to unpack a little bit more next week. Mm -hmm. So time out now, Carl. You know, last week we gave everyone a challenge to go around the room and to discuss what they learned from this message today. So we want you to actually do that today. We want you to go ahead and take that time to unpack what's going on in your heart and what you think God is telling you through this story. Yes, it's a great way to carry the conversation further, to keep on learning. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you again next week. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in.